Hey guys, welcome back to the desk with a random cable access port in it. I'm Rustwell Collector, and today we are taking a look at one of my most anticipated, if not the most anticipated sets of 2021. And it is this right here, the UNSC Checkpoint by Jazzwares for the World of Halo line. They're like three and three quarter inch, four inch Halo line, as you can see there. And I am absolutely stoked to dig into this. So a bit of a weird backstory with this. It was, uh, I ordered this from walmart.com and uh, it went up without images and without even an accurate description of what the product was. Just a price, $24.95 or thereabouts. Um, which is the proper retail price for this, but it went up without any information. Someone posted it over on Instagram and said, hey, I'm pretty sure that this is the UNSC checkpoint set being sold. And I took a risk. I figured, hey, it's the right price. It, it seems to be the set. It just, it lacks any product photos at all. And uh, it even was, it was just called Halo Mission 375, I'm pretty sure. So it didn't even have the name UNSC checkpoint. Really weird, kind of par for the course with Walmart, I suppose. But either way, I am really, really excited to dig into this pack. And yeah, it arrived today via FedEx, and FedEx is a little bit laggy. Otherwise, I would have had this uh, in hand and up on YouTube a couple days sooner. But, but I digress. It doesn't matter. I'm really excited to dig into it today of all days. And uh, yeah, let's take a look here at the packaging first. Now, of course, this is packaged in what has become the standard for World of Halo. Nothing new, but also that's not a bad thing. It's very nicely packaged. I always like this. I mean, if you were an inbox collector, you could definitely have this on display and it would look really sleek. Master Chief, Halo logo, um, a little thing explaining that we're getting 10 terrain bases included as well, which is really, really nice. 28 pieces in total. And then flipping it around here on the back, we can see wave four, I believe, of the World of Halo single carded figures, as well as some of the multi-packs that you can get currently. Someday soon, I will get this wave. I'll have it reviewed, certainly, and I'm really, really stoked for it. But until then, we're talking about this. We're not, we're not talking about that wave. We're talking about this right here. So let's break open the packaging and take a look at all these wonderful, wonderful parts. And here we have it all out of the packaging and set up. Wow, this is this is a lot. And for the $25 price point, this is like unheard of in today's day and age of toy collecting and just uh, toys in general. This is a really solid price point for this. In fact, I almost feel like this is a little bit uh, underpriced because I feel there's a lot of quality product here. Just, just from looking at it initially, you know, and knowing what the line has produced previously, I am absolutely impressed with this and very happy with a $24.95 price point. Now to start things off, as usual with my reviews, we're going to take a look at the accessories first, which is like 90% of this pack here, and then we'll take a look at the figures. So starting it off right here in the front, we'll just start with the rocket launcher. This is a very nicely sculpted weapon. We've gotten this before with the Master Chief and Mongoose set. It's really nice to have another one though in a different set because, you know, you can never have too many rocket launchers. And as we've seen before with this line, the weapons all have that little tab on the back that allows it to peg into the back of any Spartan, Master Chief, or even the Marines. They all have that little slot there, allowing it to be stored on the back of any character. Next up we have the Needler, and this looks absolutely amazing as well. I love the bright pink used for those needles coming out of the top there. Mine got a little bit warped in the packaging, but that's not a problem. The, the plastic that these are made in, if you happen to get a warped weapon by some chance or misfortune, you can always just uh, give it a little bit of heat, whether it's with a, like a hairdryer or some hot water, and then it'll shape back into its uh, proper form, dunk it in some cold water to reset the plastic, and you are good as gold with it. So this is really nice to have. Works well with the Elite, works well with the uh, with the Spartans, depending on your personal your personal choice of poison when it comes to playing Halo, whether you like your UNSC weapons or your Covenant weapons. And then next up we have the Sniper Rifle, and this I thought was just a straight up repack of the one that came with the Marine Sniper from the previous World of Halo single carded line. However, when I got it out to compare it, I realized that they've actually gone ahead and beefed up the sniper rifle quite substantially. At least, I mean, that's pretty much twice as big in terms of overall size and scale, and I'm here for it. I'm absolutely here for it. 
Uh, perhaps this was scaled to match the Marine, or perhaps this was scaled up to match the Spartan, but either way, I like the beefier, larger sniper rifle. I think it looks really nice, and in terms of just scale, let's compare here with the Spartan. He can hold the smaller sniper rifle just fine and dandy. <clears throat> That looks really nice, however, it does seem like it might be just a tad undersized compared to the size of the Spartan. So now giving him this larger sniper, it's a little bit more difficult to fit in between this armor plating and his shoulder, but he does hold it pretty nicely. It might be a tad oversized now, I don't know. I'd have to look at like actual screenshots from the game to say for sure. Now maybe the proper scale for this lies somewhere in a sweet spot between these two. I'm not totally sure. But I still appreciate that this got beefed up quite substantially, and especially for the smaller parts like this handle and this uh, barrel, where it could get more easily warped. The denser sculpt that we have on it now is going to help prevent any kind of warping or misshaping that can happen with the softer plastic. And again, I do appreciate that these are in the softer plastic because with older figure lines, it was very common for barrels and handles and things to break. Having them cast in soft plastic, while it can cause warping if you store them improperly or maybe just in the packaging, um, it's easily fixed and it's a lot better than having to glue on barrels every week when they snap off. So I'm here for it. I definitely appreciate that about these. And of course, this can peg onto his back, just like all the rest, if I can get that lined up right there. There we go, just like that. And the bipod does fold up and fold down, which is a really cool little feature as well. Then we move on to the weapons rack, and this is something I was really, really anticipating as part of this pack. It's a nice hard plastic little uh, diorama piece, or like a set dressing piece. Has the little UNSC logo down there, and then it comes with all of these weapons, which basically use the same peg system that attaches to the Spartan to slot into all of these little grooves on the backboard of this weapons rack. Included with the weapons rack is this weapon, the Hydra Launcher. This is one that I'm not familiar with. I don't believe I got to use it when testing out the beta. It was probably there and I just completely missed it, but it's a really nice sculpt. The paint apps are very nice, even down to the little dot right there and some little paint apps here on the cylinder. It looks really cool flip it around, it's just as cool on this side. And yeah, it looks really sweet, can't wait to see this in action. Moving on down the line, we have the standard assault rifle from Halo Infinite. This time with a darker paint deco, I don't believe we've gotten this with the more like dark charcoal gray here and along the upper barrel with that nice yellow stripe. It looks really, really nice this way, more, uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit more imposing in my mind, more realistic, it's hard to say, but I definitely like it looks really nice and that sculpt once again is just so highly detailed for a small weapon like this. It's really nice to see a three and three quarter inch scale figure line with weapons that are this nicely detailed. Next up we have the Heavy MG, I think that's what it's called. I'm really bad with a lot of the weapon names so I apologize. If I'm wrong about this, it's my bad. But yeah, this is still very nicely detailed once again. The paint apps are all nice and crisp. Very nice tones all over, and I love, love, love the color deco on this with the, the green and the gray and then just kind of like the off-white stripe there. Looks really nice, and honestly, this was one of the weapons that I started getting fairly good at with Halo Infinite, though I am still a Halo 3, Halo Reach uh, OG fan, if you will, and so my, my expertise lies in weapons that are from that game. It was a little bit difficult getting used to this because I didn't play... Halo 4 all that much, and I know it was in that game, but I didn't have a lot of uh, playtime with that. But either way, very fun to use in Infinite, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that in the campaign. Next up we have the Battle Rifle, everybody's favorite weapon in Halo 2 and Halo 3, I'm sure. Absolutely love this once again. A new paint deco, and also, I'm kind of wondering now, I didn't think of this earlier, um, I'm wondering if this is one of the paint decos that we can unlock in the game. Like, is it... Is it some unique uh, coating or something like that that we can get for the weapons? We'll have to wait and see. But either way, I like it. It's either black or like a very dark gray, a you know, very Batman <laughs> of these weapons. I like it. Looks really nice. And yeah, the sculpt is there once again. If you were so inclined, you can definitely go back over these weapons with a little bit of a paint wash or maybe a little bit of a silver dry brush, and it would really pop out all the little details that are hidden on there. And then finally for this weapons rack, we have the Bulldog, and this one also is just so nicely detailed, not just with the sculpt, 
but the paint apps are so small and so intricate, it's really, really nice to see that. I mean, and, you know, I love Halo just as much as the next guy, and I'm, I want to be as unbiased as possible with this review, and I am genuinely, genuinely impressed with the paint apps on this particular weapon. Um, you know, I'm not trying to just be a, a Halo simp here and be like, oh man, I love this in Halo, so I love it in figure form too. No, I'll be I'll be critical where criticism is due, but uh, I don't think it's due here with the Bulldog and really any of these weapons. I think they look very nicely detailed, and uh, I am excited to see them in action in the game, but I'm also excited to get them out and do some toy photography with them because there's a lot of opportunities with this selection of weapons. You can do a lot of unique poses and a lot of unique battle scenes, and just having this many different weapons, it's really nice to uh, diversify what weapons you supply your your Marines or your Spartans, whatever you might display or uh, you know photograph with, because it's uh, it's you know you get one weapon per figure typically, and it's nice to now have a few extras, a little a little uh, differences. If you buy say ten Marines, you're going to get ten of the same weapon. But now you've got a battle rifle and an assault rifle and a shotgun. You can kind of swap them around and have a nice um, a nice diverse fire team, you know, to go after all those Covenant with. Moving on from the weapons rack to the weapon that is mounted on a tripod, we have the mounted machine gun. I was not expecting something like this to get made so early on in the line. I know we're I know we're three or four waves in, but uh, it still seems it still seems early to me to get something this cool. And I don't know. Maybe does, does this mean we might be seeing like a, a noble team sometime in the future? Because this would be perfect for George, obviously. But um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't complain. I would have no complaints with a World of Halo scale noble team. But. Until that time, let's take a look at this. We have the tripod, nicely detailed and painted as usual. I'm going to try not to say that with everything that I handle in this video, but it's going to be hard because these are nicely painted and detailed, and they are fairly accurately representing the things that we love from the game in a small scale, which can be hard to do sometimes, you know, scaling something down into this scale. The Spartan Collection has a bit of an easier time, I feel, because it's larger and therefore you can pack in a lot more detail but they do a good job with this. And you might be wondering, even though you probably saw it in the packaging like this, they do come apart, which allows you to set that aside and then go on blasting the Covenant from a, uh, a more mobile position here. Now, I think where they hold it in-game is right here, and that is sculpted in, so you can't actually fit the hand right there. But uh, looking around here, you can kind of you can kind of fudge it, you know? They can hold it in the back just like that. And if you got them posed more like this facing forward, you're really not gonna notice that too much. I think that that looks just fine. And I suppose if you were really dedicated and you wanted to customize this, and believe me, there are a lot over on Instagram doing just that, you could go in with an X-Acto knife or something and carve that little piece of plastic out so he could hold it in, uh, in the correct way. That might be something I do, I'm not really sure yet, but Either way, it's it's still nice. He holds it well, even without being able to hold it the proper way from the game. But, you know, when you translate stuff from the game into figure form, there's a lot that you just can't do because, you know, you can fudge a lot of stuff in a game to where it looks correct but doesn't necessarily uh, work in reality. And so when you're translating game stuff into into real life, into figure form especially, and also a small-scale figure form, there's some lines that kind of have to be blurred for the sake of just everything. Be it practicality, cost, or just the mold making process in general. There's just some things that don't exactly work. And I think they do a good job of that with this World of Halo line. The things that might be game inaccurate to some people, I, I think work. But then again, I am very easygoing when it comes to these things. I like Star Wars. I like Halo. I collect the figures. I don't expect game or film 100% accuracy. I, I enjoy these things for what they are. They're toys, and they have toy features and playability features, and that comes before, uh, ooh, is that is that stripe in exactly the correct place on the on the helmet or whatever? That's 
that's a little bit too nitpicky for me. And not to get off on a tangent, but I do think that with this set, playability is a massive, massive feature. They've given you an Elite and a Spartan, the good guy and the bad guy, or switch it up if, you're, if you have a good imagination. Switch it up and you got a, a rogue Spartan and a, and a good, friendly Elite, and they're going head to head. You've got a rack of weapons here in the back that you can stock them up with, a mounted machine gun for one of them to defend the outpost with, tons of crates and a drop shield and all this stuff that I haven't even gotten into yet. All of that to make a really awesome battle scene. And if you're like me, uh, maybe maybe someone out there is looking at this for their kid that loves Halo or something. When I was a kid, we got styrofoam and cardboard boxes and built bases and all kinds of things like that. These are the packs. This type of pack right here is exactly what I would have wanted as a child to uh, to play with in those types of things. If you had a cardboard box or a, a styrofoam chunk from like a computer or a refrigerator, you would have a base. I would have a base. That's how I built things as a kid. And then you slap this in there and you slap some other things in there to make it look like an outpost for the UNSC. And that would be so awesome. So this, the playability of this pack is it's there. It's definitely, definitely there. Crates and set dressing pieces mixed with accessories for the characters to actually interact with. It's, it's perfect in my mind. This is the perfect type of battle pack playset combination. And yeah, I haven't even gotten all the way through it and I'm already singing its praises from the rooftops. I can't help it. Maybe, maybe I am a Halo simp after all, but uh, let's take a look at the last few accessories here and then we'll dive into these awesome figures. There are not one, but two of these UNSC crates. And these are, you know, pretty simple. They're just cast in a, in a greenish gray plastic with a UNSC stamp right there. But they do open up and that is really nice. They open up on a system just with two little pegs there and they're hollow. Imagine that, they open up and they're hollow. But it allows you to store a lot of the accessories that you may not want to lose. And then you can seal it right back up, pop the little pin back in, and these actually stack on top of each other pretty well. Maybe, you know, just like that, yeah. They stack on top of each other. You can have them side by side, but either way, it's a great way to uh, to not lose all of your little tiny accessories, you know? It's pretty common to, uh, to lose them and to have something included with the set that actually allows you to store them. It's very nice. Next up, we have the wonderful, wonderful little fusion coils. And I may be wrong, one of them might be like a Forerunner coil of some kind. Um, I wasn't exactly paying attention when I was throwing these at enemy players and vehicles uh, when I was playing Halo Infinite, but either way, I'm happy to have two of these little guys um, ready to throw at the Elite or the Spartan or something. Once again, the detail is very nice, but also just having that transparent piece in the middle and two pieces here on this one, is really really cool. I I just love it. It's got a it's got a nice effect to it. It's really cool. And if you're doing toy photography, you could definitely put a little LED behind it just to give it that glow, like it's uh, about to blow up or something. And of course, you could also have just a, a Spartan casually carrying it around. Definitely, definitely not about to just hurl it at a passing warthog in the hopes of getting a multi kill. That would absolutely never happen. And then finally, I'm going to be perfectly honest, I wasn't even aware that this was included in the pack until I opened it and was like, oh, this is, this is behind everything. This is, you know, on the cardboard behind everything. We have a drop shield or the equivalent of a drop shield. I don't know if there's a, another name given to it in Halo Infinite just yet, but yeah, two pieces, very simply made, but very effectively made. We have the little stand here and then we have the transparent yellow, semi-transparent yellow. It's a little opaque, which is nice. Like it's, yeah, you can kind of see it diffuses a little bit there, but it's got a really cool pattern. It's got all of that raised and molded into it, and then you can just slip it onto the stand here, which you know it does kind of kind of want to fall out. But if you just set it down, there's no there's no risk of that happening. It looks really nice, and uh, again, if you're if you're having a little battle here with all the figures set up and everything, you gotta have your drop shield for deployable cover. You know, it's it's just. It's a fact of life. And then finally, before we get to the figures, we have one more thing to look at, and it's all 10 of these terrain bases that are part of this pack as well. And this is super beneficial to anyone trying to display their armies on a shelf or 
Even toy photography, this can come in handy because you can kind of hide these like under rocks and under dirt and stuff, but it lets you have more dynamic poses where the figures aren't just going to topple over as is all too common. Either way, you can get a lot of different uses out of this, and I really appreciate that we get three different texture patterns for this. We have the more arid, rocky one, we have the grassy one here, and then we have sort of an in-between, maybe, maybe a muddy grassy one if you want to look at it that way. But yeah, we have three different patterns. We get four stone ones, three grass ones, and three mud ones. And yeah, there's so many uses for these. I absolutely love that. And uh, you, know, you can combine these together to make one big piece of terrain like you see here. Or you can pop them all apart and have them as individual bases as, as need be, as your collection has need of them. Sometime in the future, what would be really nice to see would be one that is more like a... It'd be kind of boring, I suppose, but one that's just like cement or um, like some sort of interior, like a building interior, maybe like a metal grate or something. Since so far, all of them have been outdoor terrain, but definitely I'm not complaining about that. I love to see it either way. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, possibly, unless you just skipped ahead to this part, which is totally okay, but go back and watch the rest of this video. This is an Elite Mercenary, which is uh, kind of the, the replacement of the Covenant, kind of, I guess. Um, we'll just have to wait and see when the, when the game drops. We'll understand more of these guys, I'm sure. And the camera doesn't really pick it up. It definitely looks blue when looking through my view screen here. But this is actually a purple color. And I checked with Nostalgic Adam over on Instagram. He has an absolutely awesome YouTube and Instagram, so go check him out. But I checked with him because he has the single-carded Elite from Wave 3, and uh, he was saying that it's blue, and that this looks more purple than the one that he has. So I thought it was just a straight-up repack from the single-carded release, but it may not be. And until I get the Elite in hand from the single card, I can't confirm or deny that just going off of what Adam said, though. Uh, it appears that this is a unique Elite Mercenary from the single-carded version, and that is awesome. I love to see it. I love to see a pack that includes two unique figures. Now, what's cool here is that this is the first, well, this and the single card are the first two Elites that we've gotten that are just generic or, like, lower-class army builder type Elites. Because before, we had the Elite Warlord and we had uh, Jega Rodami. Rodanami? I can't pronounce Elite names. They're very confusing. Um, we're just going to call him Jega. Uh, we had Jega and the Warlord, which were both leader classes. Technically, one's named and one is like a leader. So it's nice to have an army builder, and that's what this is. It's it's a really nice army builder. Going over articulation, we have a hinge and a swivel at the neck. You can get upwards, down, and then you can kind of like angle it to get a side to side, but mainly it's just a uh, a swivel all the way around so he can be like, hey, what's what's up, you know? At the shoulders, we have a hinge and a swivel, so a swivel all the way around. Hinge up to uh, maybe 45. You can kind of... You can kind of fudge it a little bit there, but it, it goes to right about there. Then down to the elbow, you can get it to right about there at a 45. That is, that's one area I wouldn't mind seeing improve, just a little bit more of an indent there to allow the elbow to crunch just a little bit more, maybe a little bit closer to 90 degrees. But it's all right, it's still good. And then down at the uh, at the wrist, we have this really cool piece of armor that actually kind of like interlocks with itself. I love that, just the the design of that is so cool, but then the wrist itself is a hinge and a swivel as well. Swivel all the way around and then an in and an out joint. Uh, it doesn't really allow you outward very much because of that interlocking armor, but that's not a big deal. It can go in and it can go to, uh, I guess, more of a relaxed pose there. Same thing on both wrists, so in and out there as well. Moving on to the torso then, we have the ball joint here in the torso giving you some nice side-to-side -side as well as some action in a swivel motion there. Only a little bit of forward and back crunch, but you know, the legs are doing most of the, the hunched over look as well as just the neck in general, so it's all right. I think that looks really nice either way. I don't need a lot of crunch right there personally. Moving down to the hips, we have a ball joint and thigh swivel system, so the ball joint allows you to swing it forward and back just like that with the thigh swivel allowing you to move that piece of armor right there out of the way, getting it to there, and then you can kind of drop the knee down in case you need to uh, splay the thighs out just a little bit, maybe to get it onto the ghost. And then moving down to one of what is essentially two knees for this elite figure, we have both of them being hinge and swivel, so single jointed swivel like that. You can hinge it forward to there, hinge it down to there, a really nice crunch there, I like that. Then with this lower one, you can hinge it all the way straight like that, or down to there. Then moving down to the foot, we have a hinge and a rocker in place, though 
there really isn't any leeway for that hinge to move, so it's really just the rocker, which is kind of all you need with this because the rocker allows you to get more of dynamic posing out of this figure while keeping those feet level with the ground, giving it more stability. Though I suppose if you ever need stability, you do have all these nice bases there, but either way, just standing him up on his own, like just like that, boom, he is standing. And with elites, it can be kind of tricky because of the weird center of gravity that they have. They don't always want to stand up, but I mean, just like that, he is standing and that's not him on a peg, you know, he's just, He's just standing, just like that. It's That's really nice to see. I, I'm i honestly impressed by that. And now moving from him to the Spartan, and I I saved the best for last. And you know, maybe, maybe other people won't see it as the best because, oh, it's just another Spartan, wow. Oh, but it is not just any Spartan. It is the Gungnir Spartan, and that is the helmet that I had to grind for for so long in Halo Reach because that was like my OG helmet. The, the one that I really had is like, the one, the one, you know, it was on the pedestal as the helmet that I had to get, Gungnir. And uh, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. That's how I always said it, Gungnir. And yeah, though um, this isn't the one that I really wanted. I never unlocked it until MCC, but the one that had the EOD fins on the side, that was the one that I think everybody wanted. But I was happy with this. You know, I was, I was a humble, humble, low-level guy with a... Uh, spending 125 credits, if I remember correctly, on the Gungnir helmet, and man, I thought I was all that, just running around with that. Meanwhile, I was getting absolutely wrecked by people that were noble and reclaimer levels, so yeah, if you ever played Halo Reach back in the 360, you, you know what I'm talking about, but uh, yeah, anyways, this is the Gungnir Spartan in a nice, nice shade of blue. I absolutely love, I love blue Spartans, and I love seeing them in this darker shade of blue, kind of the classic multiplayer blue. And this is pretty much a reuse of the Mark VII body that we've already had before, just with a few added tidbits here with the up-armored chest and the, I guess, the grenade belt going around his waist there. And the helmet is, of course, switched out. But there is one other noticeable difference that I've seen here. And uh, we'll go over this more in depth in articulation, but I'll just talk about this particular aspect right now. They've swapped out the hinge joints on the hands. On the old Mark VII, we were getting an up and a down hinge on both wrists, up and down, up and down. Whereas with this one, they have since swapped that out with an in and an out hinge and swivel, of course, but just an in and out that can be more useful when posing with the weapons. Though there still is some debate over <laughs> which is better, though uh, me personally, I think I typically like one of each, having the, uh, the right trigger hand usually being the up and down and the left, like, gripping hand being the in and out. Though I've gone back and forth about that particular topic with some people over on Instagram, so it can work either way. You can still get dynamic poses with both of these figures. I don't think that there's one that's necessarily superior to the other. It's all about what you're looking to get out of the pose, and I think both fulfill a weapon holding hand very nicely. In terms of articulation for the Spartan, there's a hinge and a swivel at the head. Though once again, the armor is kind of inhibiting that hinge, so you can kind of get it up and down, but mainly it's a swivel side to side. But that's okay, because I mean, that's really, you're getting pretty much all you need right there. Then down to the shoulders, hinge and a swivel all the way around, up to just under 90, elbows to just under 90 there as well, single jointed swivel, so you can swivel that all the way around just like that. As you saw with the hands, it's a hinge and a swivel all the way around, in and out swivel there. At the torso, we have a ball joint, so you can get some really nice turns there with a back crunch and a forward crunch. Really, really love to see that. Ball joints and thigh swivels at the hip once again, so you can get him into a seated position. He would definitely fit nicely into the Warthog or any upcoming vehicles we might get. And then it can go back to right about there. Double jointed knees gives you right to there, and then hinge and a rocker at the foot which allows you to point like you're doing a little ballet Spartan. And then of course you can go forward to there, rocker side to side, great for dynamic poses. I feel like nowadays the rocker has become kind of the standard for action figures, even in the three and three quarter inch world. And I'm absolutely okay with that. You never want to go back to swivel, swivel ankles once you've gotten figures that have actual rockers. It just makes posing so much easier. You can always keep that foot level to the ground, giving away a nice, stable stance to pose, whether it's on a shelf or for toy photography. It could be really anything. It just gives them a much more stable stance. 
With the two figures standing next to each other, I feel that the, the height difference here is is good. It feels natural, it feels correct. And of course you can uh, hinge out the legs on the Elite to give him more of an imposing stance over the Spartan, but that does make it a little bit more difficult to get him to pose. Of course I get it on the first try. The height difference is just a really nice touch of accuracy, and of course it'll make any Spartan maybe second guess whether he should have uh, insulted the Elite's mother that way. Now this is just a personal opinion on this, but I absolutely love that this is yet again another blue Spartan. Yeah, you can just sit over there. It's another blue Spartan in the world of Halo line because so far we've gotten the Spartan Sealox with the Gun Goose, and we've gotten the Mark 5B that came with Jaga in the two pack. And right now I'm kind of just building my own little Spartan blue team and I love it because blue is one of my favorite colors and it's also the team that I just kind of prefer to play as when you're doing a red versus blue match in Halo. So I'm okay with having a little team of blue Spartans like this. Now, of course, we will eventually need some red Spartans, but that'll certainly come down the line as the as the waves are released. We'll definitely be getting more and more Spartans. <clears throat> and you can't really count this as a red Spartan because this is technically just an armor coating. This is the, uh, this is the, the... And no, you really... And no, you really can't count this as a red Spartan because this is just an armor coating. And this is what, the, the Scorpion Punch armor coating? It's not technically red. It is like maybe, I don't know... 15% red and then 85% steel gray. But yeah, I am not complaining one bit about having blue Spartans and a little army of them at that. And now comparatively with other lines, these Spartans stack up very nicely with other 118 lines. Here he is next to an Acid Rain World figure, as well as a G.I. Joe Retro Collection Retro line uh, Cobra Officer. So again, I feel like that's a pretty good height for a Spartan to stack up next to what is essentially a normal human figure. It's a good size comparison. I think it's pretty true to the 118 scale. And if you're wondering, this is what he stacks up like next to the McFarlane Master Chief, so they're definitely not going to scale together well, which is which is A-OK. -okay. I would much rather have this figure line scale with my other 3 and 3 quarter inch figures because I just have more of them. And so it's nice in case I want to do a crossover or maybe build a custom using parts from other figures. They're going to scale really nicely together with my 118 collection. In the world of Star Wars, here he is next to the Vintage Collection Darth Maul. Now, this line might be more of a true 3 and 3 quarter inch line, whereas this one might be closer to a true 118 scale line. It's hard to gauge that, but uh, definitely Star Wars is a little bit undersized to the world of Halo, but that's okay. I don't sense a crossover event happening anytime soon between those two lines, so... I think we're we're safe there. But there we go, the UNSC checkpoint set in all of its wonderful, wonderful glory. I am really impressed with this set. I truly, truly am. At the price point, at the level of detail, with the level of accessories, it is awesome. And like I said, I did get this off of Walmart.com. It has since gone out of stock, so you won't be able to find it there just yet, but I am seeing people find it on shelves. So don't give up hope, be on the lookout for it. Do not pay scalper prices for this. Do not give them the money. It's, it'll be on shelves. You'll be able to find it. Just don't, don't feed those monsters. <laughs> Please do not. I am digging this so, so much, and I'm excited for more packs like this. I'm excited for Wave 3 to drop in my area. It's just, this is the line that I am currently buying into, like, almost 100%, because I'm not able to find a lot of the other lines, and where they are lacking... The world of Halo is just taking off like a rocket ship, and I am, I'm 100% here for it, 100% back in this line. I love it. So thank you for watching. Thank you to the team that is creating these awesome figures and the new Halo Infinite game, because this is fantastic. This is what the fans have been wanting for a long time, I think. So you guys are awesome. Keep up the good work. As always, links down in the description to social media if you want to follow me over on Instagram. I do toy photography. Just posted a World of Halo photo fairly recently, uh, depending on when you watch this, of course. And yeah, as always, Thank you for watching. I said that already, but thank you for watching. Have a wonderful evening, noon, or night. Be kind to one another, and I will catch you all in the next video.